preparation continues. Got a few more buckets I'm going to fill. Let's keep it going. All right, I got to go get my recycle bin. Got the umbrella up. It's been raining like this for damn near 20 hours now. That means the ground is thoroughly, thoroughly saturated. So, uh, if and when we do get 6 inches, 12 inches, however much rain's coming, this will all be one flooded area. I have to get the recycle bin. I don't want it to turn into a projectile. You can see, like I told you, people are sheltering in place here. There's cars in the driveways. So, let's see what that has. There's another car up there. It's uh, about almost 6 in the morning. Whew. The wind's already picking up. I'll get this video up. I'm going back to bed as soon as I grab this thing. But I just wanted to show you what's going on. Ah, damn. Wind, come on, come on. I mean, the storm ain't even here yet. Good God. All right. The storm is a coming, coming around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. It's about uh, 7.30. Impact imminent. All right, it's 11 p.m. here. Just wanted to get a quick video. Power's been going in and out. Got everything prepped and ready for the hurricane. You can see it's blowing in here. I don't think we're going to take the brunt of it like, uh, well, Tampa Bay obviously is underwater right now. And you can see the big tree there. Hopefully, hopefully I'm getting it in the light. All right, I'm going to put up a video. Go in and make it. Uh, Cause I'm done. I'm done prepping, man. <laughs> I mean, laundry's done, dishes done, cooked every damn thing I could. All the meats cooked, and my house is freezing. I got the air conditioning cranked down to 68 degrees in anticipation of losing power. Woo! Holy shit! <laughs> I gotta get off of here. Hold on. President Biden took time out of his busy day because, you know, uh, his busy sleep schedule to try to look presidential all of a sudden. And he just moments ago wanted to tell all of you that, no, 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 we are not. The federal government is not controlling the weather. And he slammed any of you who think that that's uh, that's the case. Watch. Now the claims are getting even more bizarre. Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene, a congresswoman of Georgia, is now saying the federal government is literally controlling the weather. We're controlling the weather. It's beyond ridiculous. It's got to stop. Moments like this, there are no red or blue states. There's one United States of America where neighbors are helping neighbors. Volunteers and first responders are risking everything, including their own lives, to help their fellow Americans. State, local, and federal officials are standing side by side. Let me repeat, no one should make the American people question whether their governments will be making sure that this is act around strikes. They'll be there. Yeah. What? <laughs> what was that last bit? No last one bit? should make it to sit when the government ends your foot and your share. Did you guys oh, get okay. that? Okay. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying. I hope that. you understand I that. I quite understand. 
And by the way, do you think that this guy would be read in on government, uh, you know, geoengineering programs? Like, we got to get Biden on the phone. We got to get his approval for this. Uh, I do not, but he was in politics, you know, just after the Vietnam War when we did, in fact, use cloud seeding to flood enemy trails. Yes, so Operation the Popeye has, it's, in fact, controlled the weather and has well had that technology for a long time. So, what about that? I, well, and if, just even separating yourself from just the government side of it. I mean, we talk about NGOs on here at the show all the time. Talk about Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, talk about Lockheed Martin. They get to not have things regulated because the government gets to hand things off to all of these organizations that are controlling HARP or these next rad radar systems and all of this other stuff that we set, we get to sort of step back from and we can claim plausible deniability, right? Like, hey, yeah, your government is not doing it. Wink, wink. Your government... But what about these other non-governmental organizations which are receiving massive grants from the United States government? He's lying. So we're going to sit down with Dane Wigington in just a moment of Geoengineering Watch to talk all about this weather control and all of the new data that he's uncovered about what is happening with Milton. In fact, I mean, specifically, why it suddenly just bounced off of Cancun. Is the United States government manipulating and even worse, controlling the weather using NEXRAD Doppler radar installations? It sounds like a conspiracy theory until you realize the U.S. government has these installations all over the United States. Watch. Was Hurricane Helene's path and behavior just the result of natural processes and climate patterns, or was it manipulated? The circular blue flashes seen in this video are frequency transmissions from the NEXRAD network of transmitter installations. All available science evidence makes clear that atmospheric frequency transmissions can and do have a repelling effect on air masses, especially if and when the air masses have been seeded with electrically conductive nanoparticles. The brighter the blue flash from a frequency transmission installation, the more pronounced and powerful the repelling effect on any air mass or storm in the vicinity will be. Where there are no blue flashes, there is no transmission, thus no repelling effect, thus no resistance for a migrating storm. Translation, a migrating storm will be hindered from moving toward frequency transmissions and will easily migrate in a direction with no transmissions. So again, I ask... Was Hurricane Helene's path and behavior just an act of nature, or was it engineered? You decide. Well, the voice you heard there is Dane Wigington. He is the lead researcher and administrator for the website geoengineeringwatch.org. He's the executive producer of the groundbreaking doc climate engineering documentary called The Dimming. I encourage all of you to watch it. Dane has devoted the last 20 years of his life to constant research on the issue of covert global climate engineering operations and the effort to expose and halt these criminals. Dane Wigington joins me now. Dane, great to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you for your voice in this most dire issue that too few are aware of. And regarding climate engineering, it's not speculation or theory or hypothesis. It's a matter of the historical record, with mountains of documents to back up the fact that these programs have been ongoing for decades ongoing for decades. And I think a lot of Americans are like, this sounds like a conspiracy theory. It's absolutely not. Um, you broke a big story this week that lawmakers who were briefed on these weather weapons concluded that what happened in North Carolina, Hurricane Helene, was engineered by the Department of Defense. Can you elaborate on that? Jim Jim Watch is communicating with congressmen from the Carolinas, from Connecticut, from Tennessee, and they are all very aware of these programs being ongoing and operational. And, and I want to delineate here this. There's a very marked difference between, quote, weather modification, which many people are familiar with, single engine propeller driven airplane with a few flares on the wings. That is not this. With climate engineering, we have, for example, a KC-135 military tanker can distribute 100 tons of toxic material into the skies to seed cloud moisture in a single payload. So they're two very different animals, and the local publicized weather modification operations are simply used as a smokescreen to mask the unimaginably larger climate intervention operations. So, and again, we have going back decades, uh, congressional documents at geoengineeringwatch.org. One is 800 pages long, outlining the scope and scale of these operations, even going back to the 70s and before, and the intergovernmental cooperation, even between governments with otherwise adversarial relations is stated as such in this document. The document calls for blanket legal immunity for anyone and everyone involved with these programs. So again, 
we, we have film footage of these aircraft at altitude, nozzles visible, turning on and off. This is not condensation we see in our skies. All military tankers and all commercial aircraft are outfitted with a high bypass turbofan jet engine, jet powered fan. 90% of the air that moves through that engine is not combusted. So we should see, except under rare circumstances, we should see nothing behind these aircraft. And we're just asking people to investigate the data, connect the dots. This is absolutely ongoing. So let's talk about, I want to talk about Helene in a minute here, but right now we've got these, we've got Hurricane Milton bearing down on Florida and overnight we see this small sort of secondary storm now in front of it, almost like a twin storm about to hit Florida. Then overnight we also saw these massive wildfires breaking out in the Tetons uh, in Wyoming. So you know, a lot of Americans are so frustrated right now. They're sitting there saying, why would our government do this to us? Um, first of all, let's talk about Milton. Is this, is there any weather modification by the government being used or directing of this storm into Florida from your evidence? Short answer, yes. And if I could back up to why would our government do this? Why wouldn't they do this when they know this has been business as usual for decades? If we look at what the Washington Post published all the way back in 1977, the U.S. military had conducted no less than 239 open-air biological tests on innocent, unknowing U.S. civilians. That's what we know about going back that far. If we look at the nuclear bomb detonations in, in Nevada, we have peer-reviewed study now to prove that those detonations eventually caused no less than 500,000 downstream deaths from the fallout for U.S. civilians. That's peer-reviewed study. So again, for those that can't imagine that the people who actually control our government which I would argue is not any elected official. It's those who control the flow of money. This is business as usual. And why wouldn't they do this? Why wouldn't they use weather as a covert weapon of control? When, If we look all the way back, Clayton, to footage of Lyndon Johnson in 1962, former U.S. President Lyndon Johnson, 1962, on film, on the record, ranting like a lunatic, stating we had the power to control the world's, world's cloud layer then, 62 years ago, and quote, he who controls the weather controls the world. So again, this is not speculation. And we have other governments like China openly announcing their massive weather modification operations. And yet if you bring the subject up here in the U.S., suddenly you're marginalized. That needs to change. In regards to uh, Milton, there's no question it's being manipulated. And there's a global network of frequency transmitters that have a repelling effect on the air mass that is heavily seeded with electric conductive elements. And if you saw the track of Milton, it got hung up a bit on the Yucatan Peninsula. There's a massive transmitter in Cancun, and we recorded the transmissions from that, trying to bump that storm back onto track. And again, once it gets near enough to landfall in the U.S., where the NEXRAD network then becomes the controlling element. We've recorded this again and again and again. Even with hurricanes like Harvey, for example, Clayton, you might remember seven days in advance, they seemed to know where it was going to go and that it was going to sit there for days. How could they possibly know that unless that's the plan? And we recorded Harvey. We recorded the actual transmissions with Harvey, Ian, Maria, Michael, all these hurricanes and their interaction with the transmitters. This is patented technology. So Again, it's not like we're speculating. No, no speculating at all. So these next rad, we showed at the, the very beginning here what happened with Helene. Um, when you have these next rad uh, frequency transmitters, where are are these? Are these on military bases? These installations? What exactly do they look like? And how are they how are they being operated? And I guess by whom is it? The Department of Defense. What we know from, for example, congressional documents, is there, is many, many, there are many agencies involved with the overall operations of these programs, but they're all compartmentalized. So the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. There's certainly central coordination for the next red network. And, and that's visible from the manner in which you can see these transmitters energizing. They're clearly completely coordinated. We do have some of the transmitters on bases, but some are not on bases. And it's even with what we think are just new cell towers going up everywhere. We know from those installing those towers that many of those installations have 10 times more power being supplied to them than they need for communications. And we can see their effect on water vapor loops. They are affecting the, the flow of precipitation. They are absolutely a part of these operations. And Clayton, if you've ever seen the herringbone patterns, the perfectly synchronized or 
align herringbone patterns in the clouds in the sky. Have you ever seen that? And sometimes you can see those in perpendicular directions, and that's indicative of overlapping transmissions from different transmitters. And you, you can't have that atmospherically otherwise. And so we have the entire meteorological community, their so-called science community, pretending that there's all these new cloud formations, that all these anomalous phenomenon we see in our skies are just something new that nobody ever noticed for 100 years, and they name 18 new clouds going back several years. And I mean, the blatantness with which these programs are ongoing is staggering. And people think, well, someone would be, everyone would be lining up to talk about this, right? The experts would all be coming out of the shadows to admit to this. What happens to whistleblowers? What happened to Assange? What happened to John Caracou? The only the person who blew the whistle on the illegal torture programs, he's the only one that went to jail for it. So no, people aren't going to be lining up. And we have uh, right now, Clayton, we have an illegal federal gag order on all National Weather Service and all NOAA employees, the nation's weathermen. Why in the world would you have an illegal gag order on those agencies forbidding them from discussing any of the agency operations? Well, and Americans sitting there saying, why would they do this? Why would the government direct this into, no, we can talk about Hurricane Helene now, into this section of Western of Western North Carolina. And, you know, if you follow Occam's razor, the shortest, uh, you know, most direct response makes sense, right? And if it's the Department of Defense directing these weather weapons and they don't want Trump voters to vote for Trump, I mean, maybe that's the direct line here. Why would they do that? Well, would it be to end the wars in Ukraine? Would it be to end the wars in the Middle East? They're going to be put out of business, tens of billions of dollars at stake if Trump becomes president. I mean, is that a huge, is that a leap too far? No, I don't think it is. I would just simply add that there are other layers as well. So we have Piedmont lithium in North Carolina that was hemorrhaging hundreds of millions of dollars because of the roadblock of the owners that were not cooperating, did not want that mine to proceed. We have Piedmont Lithium's contracts with the DOD in 2025 that were, were coming due. So we have the DOD pursuing that lithium. And again, why would we think that this kind of operation wouldn't be conducted by those who actually control the power in Washington? And I again would argue that's those ultimately who print the money. And we have other historical records of this, Clayton. For example, immediately after 9-11, we had General Wesley Clark, the former NATO Supreme Commander, with a list of countries that were to be targeted because of that event, a list that clearly existed before that event ever occurred. Subsequently, every one of those countries underwent a once in 1,000 year drought. That's statistically impossible without climate intervention. And to back this up, we have the leaders of those countries in the case of Iran on the floor of the UN stating emphatically, NATO is cutting off our precipitation. And they can see with their weather monitoring equipment what's going on upstream. So again, why would we think this isn't going on? We could go back further to Project Popeye in Vietnam in the 60s, where the US military was so successful at the flow of precipitation over that country that by the 70s, there were international treaties forbidding weather warfare. Not that anybody pays any attention to that. So again, for Americans that think that this wouldn't be ongoing or we don't have the technology for this, it's, it's, it's simply ridiculous. We have patents going back for weather modification all the way back to the 1800s. We have about 200 at geoengineeringwatch.org, 200 plus. It's an extensive list of patents and new ones all the time for everything from hurricane modification to precipitation control, to chemical ice nucleation. Clayton, have you you've seen how much hail is falling that's the size of baseball and softballs of late? Yeah. That's not nature. And, well, I was going to ask you about that. So many people posting on social media saying they've never seen storms like this before. They've never seen, they're, they're filming it continuously for minutes at a time with lightning going off every few seconds. Uh, you know, traditional thunderstorms, you see lightning maybe every few minutes. Um, but for it to be going off, it looks like something out of a movie. It looks like something out of a Lord of the Rings trailer or something like that. Um, so we're seeing all sorts of different patterns and people are saying that they've never seen storms like this. Um, are they right no. or are they just conspiracy theorists? Uh, I, I mean, again, this is, this is a matter of uh, the emperor has no clothes. Again, it's, it's, we need to use our sense of reason. It's absolutely occurring. And as far as the, 
excessive lightning now. We have an ionized atmosphere. It's much more electrically conductive. These particulates are electrically conductive. And we're talking about, based on our lab tests, working with the University of Minnesota, hundreds of lab tests over that state, and extrapolating the amount of climate engineering elements in the precipitation and projecting that globally, it appears as if somewhere in the range of 40 to 60 million tons of toxic electrically conductive nanoparticles are being dispersed into our skies. That creates more static buildup, again, more electrical conductivity in the clouds. Now we have the clouds being blasted with microwave transmission. So it's, it's the atmosphere is being treated as a physics lab and a war zone at this point. And on the chemical ice nucleating elements, which are used to temporarily and toxically cool down surface temperatures in various regions. In fact, that happened. That's another layer for Helene. We had an anomalously less warm region in that part of the U.S., while the rest of the U.S., and for example, where I live in Northern California, it's been 100 degrees plus for about six months with no rain. And, and the no rain part is absolutely a result of climate engineering as well. We can see what they're doing on satellite imagery. It cuts off the precipitation to the west, and that plugs into the wildfire scenario. All these puzzle pieces fit together completely. And on the chemical ice nucleation part, if your listeners search Lake Michigan ice balls, for example, look at the photos of what we don't see on Matrix television, 75 pound perfectly spherical ice balls covering the shores of Lake Michigan. And this is happening in the Baltic Sea, the Arctic. That's what happens with a chemically nucleated element. And for the massive hailstones, when you create this ice nucleation process far earlier and builds up far faster, that's why you end up with that. And that's why now insurance companies suddenly are canceling everybody for hail damage because now it's off the charts, just like the lightning. Unbelievable. So let's talk about Milton here. And Dane, I'll get you. I want to be respectful of your time. Milton, right? This is about to hit the weather modification here. Have you, You've seen evidence of that, uh, the manipulation using these NextRad radar systems off of Cancun to get it back on track. It looked like it was going south to more towards Cancun uh, in that direction. You say that it was pushed back to the north. And just can you talk about that? And then also, what is the goal with Florida. Why Florida, right? I mean, at the end of the day, there's got to be a purpose for this. So why are they targeting Tampa specifically? Is there some reason that you've been able to identify or, or is that not in the, that's in the realm of speculation at this point? At Jim's Junior Center, we're, we are careful to only state what we can back up with data. So in regard to the agendas and objectives, that's, there are likely many and behind closed doors, uh, whatever is going on there for the ultimate goal is difficult to state. What we can state with certainty is these operations are real, ongoing, they're patented processes, they're affecting these storms. And, and Clayton, if we go one step further, we've had for decades patented technologies to suppress these storms, to stop the convection. We have products like Dynamat designed to reduce the convection, and pull the moisture to the surface at minimum. At absolute minimum, if they didn't want these storms to happen, they would not happen. And we're not stating on the spawning of these storms, the oceans are superheating. Nature can certainly spawn these storms, although with atmospheric pressure zone manipulation, which is absolutely ongoing, again, for decades, this technology has existed. HARP, for example, in Alaska, many of your followers may know what that is. That's an ionosphere heater. It's a weapon of mass destruction. It's not some benign research facility. When you can transmit three and a half million watts, 3.6 million watts into the electrically charged ionosphere, which causes an electrical chain reaction, superheats that layer of the atmosphere, causing the atmosphere to expand up and down, you can create and manipulate pressure zones on the surface that in turn can affect storms like Milton or Helene. So they have the ability to make or break these storms however they form, and they have the ability to direct them. And the reason that normally now Clayton, you've probably heard the term rapid intensification a lot lately mm -hmm. with these storms. Right. So what we see now is there a, an attempt to keep the storms from organizing too much too early where they're over large bodies of water like the Gulf of Mexico because they're much harder to steer. And perhaps we saw that with Milton because, as you know, Milton spun up much faster and stronger than they initially forecast. And that may have made it harder to steer. Why it leaned to the southeast and and hung up on the Yucatan Peninsula and why they had to bump it off because it spun up more than they anticipated, perhaps. So again, 
there's two layers of the transmission manipulation. There's ionosphere heaters like HARP, of which there's about 100 around the globe. HARP's the biggest and the most powerful. And there's the NEXRAD network that manipulates from the ground level. And, and these, again, two separate aspects, but all frequency manipulation and all doing what to the atmosphere? How do we know the overall effects? And we, what we do know from climate engineering, sprayed dispersals in our sky. And again, these are aerosols. This is not condensation. I encourage people to look at the videos we have at geoengineeringwatch.org, up close, taking at altitude, nozzles visible, turning dispersions on and off. End of discussion. This is not condensation. So those particles have a oxidizing effect in the ozone layer, which is absolutely imploding. And we, if the sun feels extremely hot on your skin, on surfaces, when you're in unobstructed light, it's not your imagination. We know we're getting UVC on the surface now. That's a DNA damaging spectrum. And we're getting some indication there may be X-ray. That's the final spectrum of UV radiation indicating there's a functional collapse of the ozone layer close. It's being systematically denied. And it's not from hairspray cans, Clayton, as we were told going back several decades. That's simply smoke and mirrors. Those elements are harmful. CFCs are harmful, but that's a drop in the bucket compared to what climate engineering is doing. And that one aspect of this issue, if we had no other challenges on planet Earth, the functional collapse of the ozone layer alone is a near-term existential threat and climate intervention operations are the core causal factor. And we have the whole climate science community admitting that if we geoengineer, and they propose the entire global climate science community is saying, they, they think we should put jets in the sky to spray light scattering particles. It'll, it will turn our skies hazy, dirty, milky white, just like we see. It will destroy the ozone layer, just like is happening. It will disrupt the hydrological cycle, exactly as what's occurring. But then they tell us none of this is actually happening yet. So again, we're living in an asylum at this point. And the ozone layer functional collapse alone is a near-term, and I mean extremely near-term, existential threat. And we're metering that UV Clayton, we have a form, we had a former NASA contract engineer working directly for us. He just passed away with state-of-the-art equipment, but we're metering this and it's not being disclosed by any official agency. We're under attack. Um, and I think you brought up, I want to get you out of here on this, Dane, which is the, the wildfires in Wyoming. Everyone's focused on Milton, but then we see massive wildfires breaking out um, and you say they're connected. They're completely connected. So whatever the source of ignition for the firestorms that are now occurring, we know that climate intervention operations are setting the template for these fires to burn with such ferocity. They're cutting off the hydrological cycle to massive swaths of forests, just like what happened in Canada last year. We have these particles, an incendiary dust, a primary element in climate engineering patents is aluminum, which we're all breathing, by the way. These are nanoparticles. They're very bioavailable. They're very bioaccumulative. They're building up in our systems. And we know this because everyone we test, hair, blood, urine, are packed with these metals. So this cutting off of the hydrological cycle, we have toxic rain because aluminum is toxic to all life forms, period. Bioavailable aluminum, toxic to all life forms. And for those, we get this from some in the science community that claim, well, aluminum is a common element in our strata. We should expect it everywhere. Not freeform aluminum. Freeform aluminum does not exist in nature. It must be mined and refined and dispersed in order for it to be there. And that makes it bioavailable and bioaccumulative. So we have soil microbiome dion. You've heard the trees are dying because of beetles, perhaps, in the western forest. And they blame everything on the beetles. Beetles are a symptom of a sick, dead, dying tree. The toxic rain is killing soil microbiome, killing root systems, which is killing the trees slowly. The UV is killing the trees from the top down. They're studying their stomata, their respiratory ports, so the forests don't smell like forest anymore. You have no smell in the forest because the trees are not breathing. They're not respirating. They're not absorbing carbon. They're not releasing oxygen. They're dying slowly, and, and, and they're dormant. So we have more lightning. We just discussed that, right? We have more dry lightning now because the particles affect precipitation, so we have more sources of ignition. And all these elements... As part of climate engineering operations, that's what's setting the template for these fires to burn. And to add credence to this, we have peer-reviewed science study. We have an engineering wildfire section on the homepage of geoengineeringwatch.org. We have peer-reviewed study actually advocating for the intentional burning of northern latitude forests in order to provide temporary cooling, burning forests as a form of climate engineering to, to mimic the temporary toxic cooling effect of a volcano. 
I mean, this is I what mean, this is what Bill Gates has said publicly that we should burn the forests in order to cool the planet. I mean, this is the madness that we're dealing with it is right now. Absolute, total, Damn. utter insanity. Dean, I'll get and you again, out of here. I know I said I would get you out of here a second ago, but I, I just real quick here before we go, how bad do you think it's how bad do you think it's going to be with Hurricane Milton in Florida? There's no way to know with certainty because the storm is being manipulated. They can they can knock the convection down at the last moment, or they can spin it up further. It's a matter of drafting that storm and, and eliminating any wind shear at altitude. So again, when they're manipulating upper level wind currents. They have the ability to do this and, and below and they below the areas that are baking, and this is part of the wind current and pressure zone manipulation. You you see in the West here, Clayton, I mean, we are baking. It, it's it's off the charts. And so climate engineering can augment that. And and we're not denying other sources of damage to the planet at geoengineering.org. I want to make that clear. We recognize we've been really poor stewards of the planet, period. There's no way to really deny that. I mean, we we're we're contaminating everything and cutting down forests and there, there's a lot of problems that, that need to be addressed. But that being said, the intentional toxic intervention in the planet's life support systems is pounding the nails into our collective coffins, contaminating every breath we take. So under these high pressure domes, which I described earlier, when you have an ionosphere heater causing this electrical chain reaction in the ionosphere, pushing that air down under a high pressure heat dome, and that's what we're experiencing here in the West. And that can crush the convection in, in a cyclone as well. So they have so many levers at their disposal, Clayton, and we can, again, speculate about all the various agendas and objectives being carried out. But the fact that these operations are totally and completely out of control, off the rails, this is a headless, heartless, soulless cancer that is, at this point, again, completely out of control. And Clayton, I'm sure you hear people say, well, why would they do this to themselves? We hear it all the time at geoengineeringwatch.org. Why would they a.k.a. those who print the money, do this to themselves. And I would point out how much have they done to themselves already, detonating 2,400 nuclear bombs that contaminated everything and everyone, including, quote, them, those behind these operations. We have Fukushima, triple nuclear meltdown, no technology to fix it, no end in sight. Chernobyl's about to rear its head again because the sarcophagus is disintegrating there. We have 442 new plants online right now. We have 60 more under construction. And even in that, even the potential of nuclear cataclysm is, is connected to the threat of climate engineering because now that our compromised atmosphere, which we just talked about, the ozone layer disintegrating, if we have a massive CME or coronal mass ejection, which is inevitable at some point, something the size of the Carrington event that happened in the 1800s, that would shut down grids around the globe. Now we have nuclear plants everywhere that can't cool themselves. Now we have 100 Fukushimas or 200, game over. So from every conceivable direction, climate engineering, again, is is the most dire and immediate threat we face short of nuclear cataclysm. And even with the nuclear cataclysm part, they're connected. 